Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to Taming Your Cloud Applications with Intelligent Monitoring. We're glad you can make it today. My name's Toby. I'm an engineering lead here at Google. I work on cloud logging, monitoring, and alerting. And hello, everyone. I'm Dan Belcher. I'm a product manager in the same team. I'm what they call a noogler because I started at the company just last month when a company that I had co-founded uh, called Stackdriver became part of Google. Super happy to have you here, Dan. Thanks, Toby. All right, so if you've ever developed any sort of application and you had any user base whatsoever, there's probably a time when you've had this moment, that awful sort of oh crap feeling that accompanies that no re recognition that your users figured out an awful problem with your application and you had no idea it was going on. You're not alone. Pretty much everyone who develops anything has been in this boat at one point or another. But it sure doesn't make it any fun. When it happens, you're kind of pulling your hair out. And, and as you can tell, I must have been in these situations a lot. Because you already have a full-time job. You're just trying to develop the world's greatest application. And now suddenly you have two or three jobs. You're still trying to develop the world's greatest application. But now you're trying to fix that critical bug that your users were so helpful in make, helping you find. Thank you, users. And if it's just you and another person, like maybe me and Dan, well, you might be on the hook for sending email and apologies, writing blog posts, maybe even calling up customers and saying, hey, we're on it. We have this. We're going to fix it for you. You totally don't need to go look at the world's second greatest application. Why does this happen? It doesn't need to. Especially in the cloud, we have all sorts of information about how applications behave that can help save you from this sort of thing. That sounds nice, but it's not always that easy. So first of all, just a quick show of hands. How many of you here are completely new to cloud development, have never done it before? All right, there's only a handful of you. That's fantastic. And, and we welcome you to the cloud sometime soon. Uh, but if you are coming from a more traditional sort of application development environment, you might be used to a world where you write your code, you test the how out of it because you want to make sure you're giving the best product to the customer that you possibly can. But at some point, you just kind of have to throw it over the wall. You have to package it up and ship it out there. Someone buys it, they install it on a computer that you have absolutely no visibility into. When that happens, you're just left wondering how your application's behaving in the wild. And if that's the environment that you're used to, you might not have any expectation that there is more to be learned, that there is logging and monitoring information about your live running applications that you could have. So I guess the rest of you are all diehard cloud developers who've been around the block for a few years. You folks might have a different sort of perspective on what's available out there. There's a lot of really great vendors doing fantastic things in the logging, monitoring, and alerting spaces. But you have to go out and find them. You have to do some research. You have to understand what's available. You have to pick and choose from this a la carte sort of offering. Instead of just being able to rely on your platform to provide a single pane of glass to the core functionality that your application needs, wouldn't it be nice if something just gave you that out of the box? We agree. We think that it should be easier than this. And so that's why we're so excited to be talking to you about Google Cloud Monitoring today. With Google Cloud Monitoring, you don't even need to know it exists. If you're just getting started and you're coming from a more traditional background, you might not even think, oh, I need to set up logging. Oh, I need to set up monitoring because I'm going to care about it later. We do that for you. So when you do care about it, the data's there for you. But we're also able to grow with you. If you're more sophisticated and you've been looking at other vendors and maybe you're even using some of them today, we can give you some of the core functionality that you need without ever leaving the Google Cloud Platform sandbox. You get all the information about how your application's behaving in one place. That's why I'm super excited that Dan's up here on stage with me. He and his team with Stackdriver developed a world-class cloud monitoring application. And now they're bringing their real-world experience, their domain expertise, and most of all, a fantastic product to Google Cloud Monitoring. They really form the pillar of what we're going to be talking about today. And with Stackdriver and with Google Cloud Platform, you can go from knowing absolutely nothing about logging and monitoring to setting up sophisticated dashboards and alerts in no time. Dan's going to talk a little bit more about the types of data we get together and give to you to help you understand your applications. Thank you, Toby. 
Uh, so this is all about visibility. And so what we set out to do is give you visibility into your entire application stack running on the platform. And just a quick overview in terms of how it works. So we think of the application stack in three layers. Uh, the first layer of the application stack at the base is the cloud platform itself. If you're using App Engine, if you're using Compute Engine, Cloud SQL, Cloud PD, and, and so forth. And so that's the, the bottom layer in the stack. On top of that, you have the systems layer, right? So these are typically VMs running in Google Compute. Um, where historically it's been difficult to get really good information in terms of the performance of VMs themselves. And whether it's Windows or Linux, we support a variety of uh, operating systems. And we have an agent that we use to integrate with the VMs. And then on top of that, you have your application stack. For the many of you who have been developing in the cloud for some time, uh, you're probably using one or more of these components, whether it's Redis or Nginx or Apache or Cassandra or Elasticsearch and so forth. And we, integrate, we use the agent framework to integrate with those services natively. So we are able to monitor those services as well. And when we think about you know, giving you visibility, what that really comes down to is log data, um, metric data, and metadata. So we're capturing all this data from all three layers in the application. We're storing it in massively scalable databases. And then we're making it useful uh, for you. And so that starts with visualization. We'll talk a lot about. Um, really rich charting and dashboard capabilities here. Uh, but beyond visualization, if you're, if you're looking at a chart, usually you're trying to analyze the data. And so what we've done is built tools into the platform to analyze the data on your behalf. So that's the analysis capabilities in the product. And then finally, um, it doesn't really help anybody if the, if the platform discovers an issue and you don't know about it. And so there's a really flexible notification framework to let you know when issues occur, whether you're at lunch with your teammates or, unfortunately, you know, asleep at 3 o'clock in the morning. So that's how the system works you know, as a whole. We think a lot about the one or two developers working from you know, a home office or a garage and you know, the experience for them getting started. And so to illustrate that, we'll talk a little bit about the walk share application. So this is an example application that you might build someday if you didn't catch the I.O. Uh, keynote the WalkShare application is a simple app that basically tracks your sort of walk around San Francisco, for example, and makes it easy for you to share that with friends. The, app, the WalkShare application has three App Engine modules, and it uses a number of Google services. Um, what we'll focus on here is the front end interface that connects to a leaderboard module on App Engine, and then that module itself connecting to a set of Redis nodes, a cluster of Redis nodes on Google Compute Engine. And so we'll use this as an example of how you can get going with cloud logging and monitoring. So in terms of this App Engine uh, module, the leaderboard module, the first thing that the, you might want to ask yourself is, is it up and running and available to users? And so we'll show you how you can configure endpoint or uptime checks to notify you when it goes down completely or when it's inaccessible to users. Then we'll talk about default dashboards. So um, dashboards and charts that give you insight into the performance of that module. Uh, we'll talk about how you can use log data to get to root cause. Yay, logs. And also how you can create uh, very, very simple alerting policies to notify you when issues occur in the future. Okay? So we'll start with getting, getting started uh, monitoring that uh, module that's running on App Engine. The first thing that we'll want to do is configure an endpoint check so that we know if the uh, leaderboard is no longer available at all. And so Toby's going to go to services and endpoints, and he'll configure a check to basically connect to a specific host name every minute, to pull it every minute. And what this is basically doing is instructing our infrastructure of probes deployed around the world to connect to that host every minute and confirm availability. So we'll specify a protocol and a path and say that we want it to happen every minute. And Toby will check, uh, test the endpoint to be sure that we're connecting. Huzzah. So we had a successful connection in the test. And we would save this. And now it's up and running. That will just keep, keep running. Um, and you can see that we have an existing endpoint check in place. And from each of our five regions, we are actually healthy uh, right now. So this means that we've gotten a 200 response from each of the regions. Uh, and we're you know, good to go from that perspective. So we're up and running. Next, we'd want to see if there are any performance issues 
related to uh, the App Engine module. So we'll go to our App Engine dashboard. And this gives us an overview of the performance for this App Engine project. Right? And so on the left, you'll see that the format here is of kind of an operational dashboard. So we have key configuration information on the left and then key metrics on the right. And if we scroll down looking at the metrics, we can see latency, network I.O., uh, response codes, response styles. And actually, Toby, uh, response codes, it looks like we have something interesting here. Hold the phone, Dan. <laughs> yeah. So we have uh, what looks like a spike in 500 errors um, that happened at some point over the last hour. So first, I might want to zoom into that time period. So we can just click and zoom right on the chart. And that'll zoom all of our uh, charts into that time period for the module. And so we can see if there are any correlating issues. Looks like there was a slight increase in latency, a little bit more network load, um, you know, and, and again, this uh, spike in 500 errors. So what we don't know now is which module is emitting the errors. So we'll click on the Modules tab, and we'll see the same metrics broken out by module. So we can scroll down to the 500 errors, and then highlight over uh, the ones where we see the spike and discover that this is our Redis module. That's the leaderboard module. It's always Redis. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's not always Redis. <laughs> uh, so this is the leaderboard module. It looks like there's an issue here. And now we want to try to get to root cause, right? Why are we seeing this increase in errors? And one great way to do that is to take a look at the logs. So we'll go back to our developers console. We'll click on logs. And then you'll see that we bring all the log data from our App Engine projects into a single place. And we can filter the module to only that Redis module. And sure enough, we see that the errors uh, are abundant. And Toby, what do we see if we look at the details on this one? That we're sad. <laughs> yeah, that we're sad. <laughs> oh, it looks like an invalid password, Dan. All right. Well, the good news is uh, we found the issue, and also it's uh, you know, a pretty quick fix. What this means is probably the, uh, the Redis module is having trouble connecting to the, um, the Redis cluster. We're using the wrong password there. So maybe one of the teammates here in the audience could fix it. But maybe, Toby, why don't we turn on live streaming for the logs to confirm that it's still happening right now? And indeed, it looks like it is. All right. So that's how you can use the logs from App Engine to get to root cause on an issue. Okay. Now, finally, the good news is that we found the issue. We happened to be looking at a dashboard at the time. Um, I don't know who here likes to spend all day staring at dashboards besides Toby and I. Um, so what you'd want to do is configure an alerting policy so that you're notified if the issue occurs in the future. So we'll go and we'll create an alerting policy. And we'll specify that we'd like to be alerted when 500 errors increase for that specific module. So we'll select the module. And then on the next screen, we'll say that we want it to alert on 500 errors when they go above, say, 10 per second for more than five minutes. And one good thing that we do here is give you kind of a preview of the metric or a historical overview of the metric and how frequently it would have fired if you set it at that uh, level. OK? So I've saved that condition. And now I can configure a notification. So this is to say whether you wanted to email you or send an SMS and so forth. And so here we'll say we'll generate an email. And because maybe we're just getting started, and that's Toby and I in our garage, uh, we'll generate, we'll send an email to both of us when we see these 500s. OK, so that's how you can create a simple alerting policy that notifies you when there's an issue in App Engine. OK? So we've demonstrated how you can configure an endpoint check and that will notify you if there's an issue, if it goes down, if the front end goes down. We've demonstrated how you can look, get access to rich metrics for App Engine. That would be a very familiar, similar experience if you were looking at the other Google Cloud Platform services. And then how you can dig into the log data to get to root cause, and finally how you can now configure alerts to notify you when issues occur. Okay? So that's getting started. Now, if we were you know, very fortunate and our project worked out, things would get serious after a while as we have more customers and a more complex system and a larger team. We're totally getting serious, Dan. <laughs> so right, when you're first getting started, you just want things to get out of your way. As you're starting to get serious, you want more sophistication from your monitoring and logging platform. 
And we're here to help you with that. But what do we mean when we say we transition from getting started to getting serious? I mean, we have a couple cute slides, but what are we really talking about? So when you're getting started, typically you develop on machines. You might only have three or four of them in your whole fleet. You probably care very deeply about each and every one of them. They're all special flowers, and they probably all have names. You probably have one that's running your front end. You probably have one that's running your back end. There's probably a couple that are running your data store or something like that. When one of those goes down, it, it, it means something catastrophic for your application. As you start getting serious, that becomes less true. You start thinking less about individual machines and more about clusters. You start understanding a little bit less about the entirety of your architecture, and you start to understand, well, I basically know how this thing works over here, but there's other folks who are working on that who know a lot more about it than I do. When something's broken when you're getting started, again, you just have these three or four machines. It's a big deal. If that front end goes down, your entire site is gone. If the back end goes down, all of your fantastic data is gone, and you can't show anything interesting to users. When you're getting serious, well, you think about things. Because for the most part, when things get large enough, something's always broken. So really, the question you want to answer is, is it something I care about? So if you have those same three or four machines that you used to use for everything when you were getting started, you might have repurposed them into a Redis cluster a long time ago. And now, if all four of those go down, you just might not care. That's something you get to on Monday morning while you're having your coffee. But on the other hand, if you're experiencing 500 errors that you're throwing to your users, you always care about those. That is something that you want to have you wake up in the middle of the night for. So you need to understand what the difference between these different types of failures is when you're getting serious. When you're getting started, the development team is just you. Like I said, you have everything in your head. You know the entire system. This is your baby. As you start getting serious, you might have a team of 10, 20, 30, 40 people. Your grasp on the particulars of what's going on is starting to slip a little bit. You still talk a good game in meetings, but really you don't know exactly what's going on all the time. So Dan's going to talk now about what it means when you start getting serious and how we can help you still understand your application. Thanks, Toby. And so the WalkShare application is actually an app that's on the verge of a serious app, right? Because with this Redis cluster, uh, things start to look more like a distributed system. And so some of these patterns that Toby talked about are going to emerge, right? With the cluster, we'll talk about how you can get visibility into that cluster that's running on GCE and get the right metrics out of it. We can talk, uh, we'll talk about how now that you have a distributed system that's fairly complex, you may want to create a view that's all your own and how you can take information from different parts of the platform and create custom dashboards. We'll talk about how you can get log data, access to log data for VMs that are running on Google Compute Engine. And then finally, how you can create alerting policies that are cluster aware. Right? This is a really important part of you know, managing distributed systems in the cloud. And so uh, we'll show you how things look when you're kind of getting serious. Um, in this case, we'll start with the home page for cloud monitoring. One thing you'll see on the left here is that we've identified a couple groups of nodes, right? The first is this Redis cluster that we were um, talking about. And so we've discovered these groups by analyzing some metadata around the VMs. In this case, we saw that there was a, a pattern where you had a lot of machines that started, the name started with Redis. Right? You could define your own groups. The great thing here is that they're filters. They're dynamic. So if I add a new Redis node, the machine will automatically be added into the group. And you can do this. You can define groups based on accounts or regions or tags. You know, there are lots of different ways that you can do this. Okay, so this notion of a group is really important as you scale up. And now we'll want to get visibility into that, Redis, that group of Redis nodes. And so we'll go and we'll take a look at our, our dashboard for the Redis nodes. Here you see the same operational dashboard where on the left we have the configuration of the service and on the right we have key metrics. Now out of the box with no configuration what you'll have is visibility into CPU as well as network and storage I.O. for the VMs. But if you deploy the agent you'll have access to much more detailed system level metrics. So this would include CPU steel, memory, how full each of the disks attached to the VM is, are, and then also information on specific processes running on the machine. Okay. 
So this is the visibility that you get into kind of the core system stats. But also, with a simple configuration file, you can tell the agent to monitor Redis on those machines. And once you put that file on the machines, then the agent will know to pull Redis stats and send them to our service. And then you're done. What will happen is the Redis statistics will show up on the dashboard automatically. We'll know that they're Redis machines. You don't have to do any other configuration to get visibility into the Redis stats. And here you see we'll have Redis connections and uh, memory and expired keys and uh, so forth. And these metrics are also now available throughout the system. Okay. Now, if we saw an issue as we had with the App Engine module, we could dive in and take a look uh, at the logs. But before we do that, let's take a quick look at how we would create a custom dashboard um, that gives us visibility into different parts of our app. So first, you see we have our uh, custom dashboard. I've added a couple charts to this dashboard as defaults. Uh, the first, on the left, you see an overview of production CPU across a larger cluster. Right? Now, if you've managed large environments, you know that it can be a little bit difficult sometimes when you have too much data on a chart. Anyone had that experience? Yeah, yeah I guess a bunch of you. Um, one great thing here is we can go to full screen mode for that chart to get a, you know, a broader view. And then it looks like there's some interesting you know, activity here. So what I'll do is we'll, we'll go into x-ray mode. Right? And x-ray mode is a way, especially when you have a lot of time series on a chart, a way that makes it easier for you, see, for you to see the trends. So you can see here we have a set of machines that looks like in the cluster that are hovering around 40% CPU utilization. We also have this band of machines that are hovering right around 60. And then there's some noise right up at the top. So what I'd like to do is sort by volatility in the legend to see what the most volatile machines are. And in fact, it looks like there's one machine, this alerting API, um, that's much more volatile than the others. So this might be a case where we want to, um, I, you know, often we want to terminate the node and start a new one, but in this case, we may want to dive into the logs to see what, you know, what's going on with that node. Okay. So again, we can go back to our cloud console and access the logs. And now, for the first time, we have rich access to our lo the logs for the machines running on GCE. And the great thing here is you don't have to SSH into the machines to get access to the data. All of the log data from all of the machines come into one place. Right? And it's easily sortable and filterable and, and so forth. Okay? So this is how you would go you know, into the log data for machines that live on GCE uh, to help diagnose issues that, uh, in this uh, cluster. Okay? And then finally, in, you know, in this case, we can also look at the live updating uh, logs. Uh, finally, and, and probably most importantly, alerting, right? So this is a cluster. It's dynamic. We're adding and removing and recycling machines all the time. And so what I want to do is create alerting policies at the cluster level, right? And because we have this group capability, we can do that. So we'll specify here that we want to create a policy to tell us if more than a third of the machines in the cluster are, let's say, overutilized. So CPU is over uh, 50%, okay? So this, is, this will only trigger if more than a third of the machines in the cluster are over 50% uh, CPU utilization. And this doesn't matter if you add 10 more machines to the cluster, it will automatically incorporate those into the algorithm. Here again, we see a preview. Um, we can now add a second condition. So because I'm thinking about the cluster, I might want to think about the health of the cluster overall. So I'll aggregate the metrics. I could do, say, the average CPU across all the nodes in the cluster. And so we'll select our metric. We'll specify uh, the Redis cluster. We'll choose CPU. And then we'll say if the average is over 40% across the cluster. Maybe this is a case where it's telling us we need some more capacity. Okay. And we could have just as easily done it based on the standard deviation of the 95th percentile or 5th percentile or otherwise. Now, also, given that we have uh, two conditions, we didn't just create two alerting policies. We created two conditions for the same policy. And that's important because um, we may not want the alert to fire unless both of the conditions are true. So you could imagine that you have an, an, a metric for your App Engine module connecting to Redis, and you might want to look at two different metrics as conditions and then only fire the alert if both of the conditions are true. Okay. 
Here, uh, we have a larger team. Uh, as Toby you know, showed, we're a successful crew. We have 40 engineers, and uh, maybe this is a serious enough issue that I want to email everyone. Right? Mm -hmm. And so right in the notification framework, you can say that you'd like everyone to be notified. But as, it, uh, as Toby said, not everyone knows exactly what's going on in every component of the system. So we can also add readme information to the policy. So to say, if this occurs, you know, maybe you want to try these you know, three steps. Right? <laughs> um, so that's how you can create an alerting policy um, in a more sophisticated environment. And you'll see that there are lots of options in terms of um, making it really effective to alert at the cluster level, right, in a distributed systems environment. Okay. So this is how the monitoring system can scale when you get to a larger environment. Um, finally, what Toby will show us, uh, talk about is some of the lessons um, that we've learned. You know, one of them is take advantage of some of the integrations that are built into the platform. So as you get larger, you know, it might be fine to get an email alert when things happen getting started. But as you get larger, you may have a team that hangs out in chat rooms because you're spread around the country. And so you may want that to trigger into a chat room, in this case, Campfire, or a hip chat, or whatever you use. You may also have an op operations team and on-call rotations. So if you use PagerDuty, there's native integration with PagerDuty so that we can escalate uh, issues directly there. All right. Well, thank you, Dan. Um, uh, as Dan said, uh, we know we've given you kind of a whirlwind tour of Google Cloud monitoring at this point, and we really don't expect you to remember everything that we showed or all the fiddly little menus that we went through. But if you remember nothing else, just take away a few things so when you do start using this, you can be successful with it and really make the most of it. First of all, we talked a bit about groups, but groups become vital as your team grows. When you're just getting started, you might not care all that much about groups, but once you start getting even 10, 15 machines, this starts to become invaluable. You don't need to keep track of which individual machines are associated with Redis, which ones are associated with Cassandra. As these things grow and contract, your alerting rules and your monitoring dashboards grow and contract to take advantage of these things. Plus, it's just a great way to navigate the complexity of a sophisticated system. Second, you know, go nuts, be your own person. We provide a lot of personalization with the dashboards. We suggest, we have, we have reasonable suggestions for things like App Engine and Compute Engine, Cassandra and Redis, but that's just our guess for what these dashboards should look like. If you disagree, go change it. Add the metrics that you want, add the screens that you want. You can bring in any information, any data. You can have any number of these graphs on screen. You can even do things like drag them around and change this color scheme if you want. This is your system. Make it your own. And finally, we've talked a lot about alerting, but we really can't emphasize enough both how powerful and potentially useless and dangerous alerting can be if you don't use it right. So be thoughtful when you're setting up your alerting conditions. Understand the questions that you actually want to answer and go from there. If you're alerting on, say, one Cassandra latency problem that lasts one minute, and you're waking someone up at 3 in the morning, your team is not going to be happy. By the time they wake up, the problem's probably resolved itself. Even if it hasn't, the rest of the cluster's probably behaving normally. Dan showed a few examples of the sophisticated sort of rules that you can apply to do the things that you actually want to accomplish with your system. So think about those. Set the alerts up so that they're meaningful for your team. And revisit them occasionally as well. The things that are useful now might not be the same things that are useful three months from now when you've again doubled in size. And that's it. Thanks so much for coming and listening to us talk about Google Cloud Monitoring. We're super excited about it, and we hope you are too. And we're really excited that you decided to spend your, uh, an hour on your Thursday afternoon with us. Um, we're also excited because today uh, we started the Trusted, Trusted Tester Program for Google Cloud Monitoring. And that means that if you're a current Google Cloud Platform customer, if you log into your uh, developer console, you'll see a new link on the left for dashboards and alerts. If you click on that link, you can request access to oh, here, the Trusted Tester program. It's also, oh, yeah, we can show you I'll exactly show you. how that happens. Look at so that. you'll see right dashboards there. and alerts. Bum -bum. If you click there, you'll see a button to request access. Unfortunately, we can't grant everyone access right away but certainly we'll do it as quickly as we can. And then uh, secondly, 
Um, if you're not a current Cloud Platform customer, it's also a good day. And that's because you can uh, claim a $500 uh, credit to get, started, uh, to get started on the platform. Okay. And at this point, thank you very much, everyone. We'd welcome any questions or feedback that you have. We'll just ask you to use uh, the mics here in the center, uh, center aisle. <laughs> any questions? Right here in the front. Hi, guys. Um, thanks. Great talk. Um, I was very impressed by the metrics and uh, uh, alerting that was uh, demonstrated. And um, I'm wondering if uh, there is a way to alert uh, on a, a single metric that is comparing itself to a different time. Oh, uh, not yet. Not, not today. Um, this is a, a request that we've gotten in the past. Um, great, great feedback, something that we'll, uh, we'll take into consideration. Hi. I'd uh, like to ask uh, if it's possible to create custom metrics uh, and uh, custom notification. Um, so custom metrics are not yet available. Um, it, they are something that uh, we hear loud and clear are very important. In fact, it's been our number one request uh, so far. Um, custom notifications, what you do have the ability to do is configure a webhook as a notification endpoint. Mm -hmm. And so then you can just specify the path of the webhook, and we'll uh, send the data there. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, hello. Very impressive tool, I have to say, oh, uh, as an experienced user on, on GC. A uh, question is referring to the uh, extending of the agent. That's what the custom metrics, I guess, you're referring to, right? At the moment, it's impossible to extend the agent for my own application? Um, Today, it is not supported uh, to add new plugins or metrics to the agent. The agent is based on uh, Collect D. It's a package of Collect D, which is a really popular open source agent framework. Um, today, we don't support custom plugins to Collect D. Uh, but as I said, support for custom data coming into the system is really important for us. So we know that it's a, a, an important request. Right. And the second question is what is the mechanism to send my own logs to the or log infrastructure that you provide? We have a FluentD agent that we're using on GCE instances that you'll be able to configure to point to your logs. All right. And there's an endpoint I should send the log to? Somewhere. Um, I should install the FluentD agent on the instance and send the logs to wherever endpoint? Uh, uh, you, uh, you can just specify where the logs are stored, and we can configure the FluentD agent to find them there. All right. Cool. Thanks. Great. Thanks for your questions. Uh, two questions. Does this add extra cost um, if I have a lot of logs flowing in? Am I paying for an instance to maintain those, or is that sort of free as part of the rest of the system? So the capabilities that we showed you here today are available to trusted testers at no charge. Um, we don't have uh, pricing finalized for the service, but it's our intent for native things at a minimum, the platform uh, services to not charge for the core monitoring for those. Okay. okay, and then the logging, is there any No, there's no charge for monitoring right now. No. Cool. And does this provide, or will this provide more information about the containers and the external, sort of the equivalent of a, the physical PC, or is this mostly just about the operating system and inside? Oh, uh, so to, uh, could, you, could you restate the question? Um, so this seemed to monitor things like my, you know, my Linux and my mm -hmm. application. Um, do, are there statistics also for the outside, the, the virtual PC, the container, or what uh, I'm running on in the cloud? The VM? Well, out of the box, so before you deploy the agent, there are some metrics that are available basically with the hypervisor looking at activity between the hypervisor and the VM. So that would yeah. be kind of core CPU usage <laughs> and network and storage I.O. Uh, but beyond that, uh, no, I don't think so. Not, not no. really. Okay, cool. But those come from the hypervisor, then the core CPU? That's right. Yep. Yeah, good question. Any other questions or comments? All right. Well, thank you again, everyone. Thank oh, you so it looks much. Like, oh. Or you could come up and ask questions after as well, but it seems like we have one more here. Um, so maybe a heretical question, but you started being an amazing monitoring tool on AWS. Now you were acquired by Google. Will you be able to do this for both my AWS and my Google Cloud of, um, usage? Um, well, we can't really you know, uh, comment on future plans. Um, 
we're going to let our customers you know, uh, help to you know, inform that decision in the long run. Um, so certainly, there are existing customers using the Stackdriver product. We plan to continue to support them you know, in perpetuity. Uh, the, the support for AWS and Google together and other cloud platforms and Google together is something that we're looking for you know, our customers to help, uh, help us decide. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone, for your time. Thanks again.